Hey guys, it's D Money Bala. Today we're back again with the Acer Aspire TC895 with the 10th generation i3 processor. That's four cores, eight threads. It's a pretty powerful processor, so I figured why don't we try to slap a 1660 Super GPU in there, play some games, run some benchmarks, and see if it can run on that 300 watt power supply that it came installed with. Because I don't, I can't find a better power supply on the aftermarket that has more watts, but according to Newegg's power supply calculator, this should be around 275 watts. I unplugged the DVD drive just to save wattage because it, worst case scenario, I was a little over with the DVD drive plugged in. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. I'm not gonna show you how to tear down this computer. I did that in a previous video, link to that here. And um, we're gonna, if you want, if you need to know how to do that, watch that video, it goes over how to take this computer apart. I'm gonna show you putting the graphics card in and the steps you need to do that, but I'm gonna assume you know how to put it back together in this video. We're gonna try installing a 1660 Super GPU in here. So we're gonna remove these two flaps, that one, and this one, because it's a two slot card, it's gonna need both of those to breathe. Then you're gonna put your GPU in here, slide it up with your slot. You make sure that this gate thing is open. Push it in until you hear the click. And you can close your gate. You can put a screw through there. And you're gonna need an adapter from SATA to 8-pin. I'll put a link of this in the video description. And uh, you plug that 8-pin into your, your GPU. You take the SATA that's coming off your motherboard. And you plug it into here. And you've got power to your GPU. So here we are in the Newegg power supply calculator. Uh, we're just going to see how many watts this CPU would take up. It's a ATX motherboard, I'm assuming, because that's a bigger motherboard than we actually have. So I assume that'll give me um, an overestimate, if anything. We are going to put a 1660 GPU in here. We've got two 8 gig RAM sticks and a 512 SSD. If I go down here and I put the DVD um, reader and writer in, then that's over 300 watts. So I'm just going to unplug that just to avoid any trouble. And we're going to um, look at the other motherboard variants here. Um, but with ATX, I think it's probably closer to an ATX board that we've got. It's not exactly that ATX form factor. Now we're gonna check an i5-10400, the other type of CPU that this computer comes in. It looks like it's the same amount of wattage that it would need, so this should probably work for that as well. The games were running really hot, so I have MSI Afterburner here, and I'm going to set a custom fan curve. Um, so I want to ramp up once the GPU gets above 80 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to define a custom fan curve here just so that um, my GPU temperatures are going to be better when I'm playing games. And this is how I do it. So here we are in Call of Duty Warzone um, graphical settings. I turned things up to 1080p and this is what NVIDIA GeForce recommended. Um, so yeah, this is what we'll be playing with. So here we are jumping into the map, we're getting around uh, 85 to 95 frames per second, at least that's what I saw um, through this entire clip, I uh, played through a match. My temperature of the GPU stayed around 84 to 86 degrees Celsius, um, and that's with that custom fan curve. If that's too high for you guys, um, MSI Afterburner is a tool that you can use to um, tell your GPU to throttle once it gets above like 80 degrees Celsius or something. Um, yeah, but hopefully this helps you understand what kind of frame, weight, frame rates you can get out of Call of Duty Warzone.
Allied UAV overhead. Here we are in Grand Theft Auto 5. We're going to be playing at 1080p. Um, these are the presets for the Chief Forest Experience uh, recommended. It's basically everything as high as it gets. Um, and yeah, it's going to do pretty well with these settings. So here we are um, driving around the subway in a cop car, and we are getting around 175 frames per second. Um, yeah, this game runs really well at these settings. We could probably even um, have this run at 1440p or even 4K with this. I, I didn't actually try that, but it, it's, a, it's an older game now, but it definitely runs quite well on this hardware. So we're playing Fortnite at 1080p with the Epic Preset. So here we are in Fortnite. Um, I'm probably in, you're getting around. 95 FPS. Um, I would say overall I saw anywhere from 80 to 95 frames per second. Occasionally it'll get up to a little bit like 100, the low 100s, but uh, consistently it's hitting the mid 80s, uh, lower 80s, and occasionally getting up to 90. Um, yeah, if you wanted to get higher frame rates you could always play on low or performance, um, but yeah, this is a pretty pretty good setup for Fortnite at 1080p. I think uh, 80 frames per second is definitely playable at uh, Epic Preset. These are the graphical settings for 1080p Red Dead Redemption 2 Online that GeForce Experience recommends and uh, it plays and looks really well on this uh, graphics card and CPU and yeah uh, I'll let you see the gameplay. This seemed pretty indicative of what I got out of Red Dead Redemption 2 Online. Um, right around 60 FPS. Occasionally it'll go up to like 72 but that's usually when not a lot of stuff is going on. Um, riding your horse occasionally can get up to 70s. Um, in the middle of combat though it's around 58 to 62 frames per second. Um, and it, I think it's a pretty good um, pretty good experience. 60 frames per second is definitely good, especially considering my monitor uh, refreshes at 60 hertz, so that's all I really need out of it. So for me, Red Dead Redemption is uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 is totally playable with this hardware. Here's what uh, the frames per second look like uh, in combat during a bounty mission. We're going to be playing Doom Eternal at the Ultra preset for 1080p, and yeah. So the uh, frame rate is up in the top right instead of the top left, um, but yeah, it's definitely over 120 FPS with the Ultra preset, so easily very playable with this hardware um, at that setting. If you wanted to go even Ultra Nightmare, you might be able to, or some variation of Ultra and Ultra Nightmare um, and that would definitely run better on this hardware. So yeah, this has been Doom Eternal. As we can see, this computer is great for anybody that doesn't want to build a computer and you just slap a GPU in there and you've got a gaming machine. Perhaps the airflow is not the best. So thank you for watching. If you've liked this video, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.